And ladies and gentlemen, I think it's time that we ranked every single raid in all of World of Warcraft. Okay, I've been looking to do this for a while after I went on a nostalgia trip the other day. Uh, Twitter was ablaze with me rating raid bosses and stuff like that. And also, it's a good time to do this after so many years. So we're going to look at every single raid. Alright, now, some important notes before we get into this. Definitely, you're going to disagree with me on some of these things. I've already seen from some of the responses to the bosses that some of you love certain raids that I disliked. Uh, so that's going to be a thing. That's fine. Uh, also... How this we're talking about the overall raid. So a raid having one really good boss does not make a good overall raid if it's full of shit. So I'm gonna give some context to that. If you're just looking for like the list, I'm sure someone in the comments will do that. Uh, I'm gonna try and put some context to my decisions uh, and have a chat. I like having a, ta a talk about raiding. It's my favorite thing ever. Also, even the last of this list is not terrible. I I mean I fell in love with raiding the moment I stepped into a raid. Uh, so that's something you're going to have to bear in mind here, is that even though I, there is going to be a last, it doesn't mean I hate, hate, hate it. Uh, that's not the case. It's just, it's an ever-growing ever, ever growing steep curve. Uh, there are a couple of raids I'm going to miss out because I didn't progress them when they were current because I had kids. Uh, kids do not line up well with raid tier releases. Blizzard doesn't seem to care. Uh, so I will be leaving out Throne of Thunder, Heart of Fear, and I'm also going to drop out Baron in Hold and Vault of Archivon because they were PvP raid bosses. They genuinely were just designed to give people free pieces of gear. I don't consider them a raid raid. Uh, that's my perspective on it. So I am sad Throne of Thunder's not on the list. It is widely considered in my circles to be one of the best raids ever made. I wasn't there, uh, so I can't really say anything uh, about that one, so you can probably guess where it would be on my list. All right, here we go. So the actual bottom, we're going from the bottom to the top. Uh, the worst of the best raids, right, or the worst raid on my list is the Battle for Mount Hajal. Um, I can't think of a single redeeming quality of this raid when I think about it in terms of fun. I detested going to farm this every single week i would look for any excuse to get out of this raid the only requirement of my guild of the three tanks we had we had two warriors which were me and a guy called erebus and we had a prop paladin uh, called marathi two, two greeks uh, were our tanking team and the only requirement was that Marathi, the prop paladin was in the raid and one of the warriors so we would roll every single day i was a tank at this time to see who the hell was going to have to tank Mount, uh, Mount Hyjal. It was just an awful design. I don't know what the hell Blizzard were thinking with Mount Hyjal. The, I, I get that the fantasy theme of going back to these important historical moments in World of Warcraft. Again, that didn't appeal to me. I did not play Warcraft 3. I still have not played Warcraft 3. Uh, so that didn't appeal to me at all. But waves and waves of trash to finally fight the boss, wipe and have to do all the trash again, was just obscene. Like, everything about the Battle of my house sucked, and the bosses were awful. So that is my, that is my worst one. The next worst one, don't hate me, is Molten Core. Molten Core is a terrible raid. It is, it was terrible at the time. If it wasn't for the fact that it was my first raid, uh, I probably would be spitting on this from a great height. It just was the most obscene placement of trash to annoy people it was just haphazardly dotted around open spaces every single boss was just a large version of an ordinary mob they had less and this is the thing about molten core is you might i know some people go it's their first raid you gotta give them some slack no their dungeons had better stuff going on than were happening in the bosses in molten core Right, there's really no excuse. And the rest of the raids in vanilla are fine. They're totally so much better than Molten Core. If it wasn't for Ragnaros, like, that's what people remember, is Raggy coming out. And you're right, that is a, such a cool moment, is to have Raggy come out of the lava, yet everything else in there is just awful. And I, even during uh, original vanilla, I remember doing anything I can to get out of farming Molten Core. Uh, I, uh, as a priest, I was a priest at the time here. As a priest, I just... <laughs> I was so bored every single week. There was nothing happening. Like, the challenges I'd set myself was solo healing the tank and let everybody else do damage and things like that, trying to make it fun. Um, but yeah, Molten Core, just awful. Awful. Going back and redoing it when Classic launched, I very quickly remembered how much I disliked Molten Core. I could not wait for it to be over. Um, next up is going to be the Ruby Sanctum. The Ruby Sanctum is an interesting raid because it never should have existed. Uh, Blizzard threw this together because of the massive content drought that was in World of Warcraft at the time. 
So they decided to like throw in a, an extra raid um, to try and tide people over with some extra content to do. It was completely cleared by the US in the I believe the US killed it. Uh, before the EU servers even came up, it was really uneventful. The boss is cool. Like, Haleon in particular is a cool boss, and his, his mechanics paved the way for a number of bosses that would come in the future. It was just such a shame it was kind of, again, haphazardly thrown together because they just needed something, because they had no content for, like, I think it was a year and a half uh, in the game, and people were getting really fucking fed up. And so they were like, oh, here's the Ruby Sanctum. And it was like, okay, <laughs> three trash enemies and then one decent boss at the end of it. Uh, not a fan. Uh, next up is one that's probably not much of a surprise to anyone. Is uh, And it's actually so far down my list of raids that I enjoyed is Tomb of Sargeras. Tomb of Sargeras is just nightmare fuel. Absolute nightmare fuel. It's only up the list because realistically, Tomb of Sargeras has some great, great bosses in it. It does. Uh, I like the elven um, the elven boss where the shadow and the light. I really liked that one. Uh, the, I liked the f opening bosses. I thought they were cool. But everything after Mistress Sazine and including Mistress Sazine is just worse and worse and worse every single time. Now, I know people hold like Fallen Avatar and uh, Kill Jaden. I'm talking about the mythic versions here, not the, not the heroic versions are below. They hold them in high regard because of the overwhelming challenge. And... Uh, no. It was just shit. It was absolutely shit. So you had Mistress Sazine that every week got worse because your gear got better. Which actively made that boss harder. Which was so dumb. Uh, then you had Maiden, which was just a cock up from start to finish. Fallen Avatar is a good boss. It is. I would say if that was the last boss, Tomb of Sargeras would be higher up the list. But then you had KJ, and KJ is the guild killer because it was just such a tedious, long fight that was ridiculously hard. I, I'm not even included in the part of where KJ was broken, but this is a this is the first boss where realistically top world guilds were refusing to progress it because they knew it would kill their guild. It was just such a tedious effort, and my guild killed KJ once. And then called it a day immediately. Because Tomb of Sargeras was just a miserable experience. And I'm so surprised my guild actually held it together throughout the whole thing. I uh, I don't have good memories of Tomb of Sargeras at all. Despite playing with some of the most fun people ever. Fuck Tomb. Awful. Um, next up, Sunwell. Sunwell's a shit raid. Like, overall. I mean, it's just not fun. Uh, and it wasn't fun. It was just really hard for the sake of being hard. Is what I felt like with Sunwell Plateau. Everything, as I was a tank at the time, so everything hit extremely hard, and the mechanics were just really, really punishing and tedious uh, in pretty much every single boss, including KJ, including that KJ at the end. It was just, you had Malagos at the start, which was a brutal if anything went wrong, and it, then you had Brutalis, which was just the most boring DPS race ever, and it lasted for ages. Then you had Fel Mist, where... You had people wearing, like, arcane resist because it just did so much damage, which isn't fun. You're getting CC'd and blasted randomly throughout the fight. Wasn't fun. Uh, the twin Eridars were okay, but the fact that it had to be hard countered with, like, five Resto Shamans just spam chain healing and just hoping that things would go right, it was just... Uh, uh, ugh. Yeah, not for me. And then, of course, Miru, which I consider one of the worst bosses ever in this game. <laughs> I can, and that's in my top five list of worst bosses ever in World of Warcraft. Uh, KJ is okay, but most of Sunwell was... And it, also, we have to remember at the time, Sunwell was gate-locked, uh, boss-locked. So they only unleashed an extra boss like every week, I think it was. They gave you access to a new boss like, every two weeks. So you would like progress and then have to wait this period of time before you could do any more of the dungeon because... It was during a time when Blizzard was really worried about people playing the game too much and raiders were starting, to, especially the serious raiders, were really starting to go hard and hard and hard. As Blizzard tried to introduce more restrictions and blockages, raiders just fought back because they just wanted to play the game. They wanted to kill the bosses. And it just led to a really degenerate, unhealthy lifestyle. So the Sunwell was kind of the pinnacle of that. Um, interesting enough, my guild took a six-month break. Uh, during the Sunwell, which sounds bizarre. I actually talked to Alex about this when our guild recently stopped raiding, is they knew that the writing was on the wall in the Sunwell. And so they decided to take an entire... Six, like, it, was like, it might not be six months. It might have been like four months. And just said, we're going to be back raiding in November. Do whatever you want until then. And it worked. 
amazingly, uh, when that November date rolled around, all the players came back. They joined other guilds, they'd gone traveling doing achievements on different realms, things like that. And then when that November date came around, the whole raid was back together. It was an incredible maneuver. Uh, really impressed with that, but the raid itself was terrible. Um, okay, next up is going to be Mog Oshun Vaults. Mogshun Vaults is okay, but it was the uh, tank raid, essentially. Everything about Mogshun Vaults, certainly in its hard mode, was the tanks. Um, they're the only ones who really have something engaging going on there. The rest of us, on the other hand, uh, just kind of fucking milled around <laughs> hoping things would get uh, done. I think the Twin Emperors at the end of Mogshun Vaults highlights that is the job of everybody else in the raid, basically, besides the tanks and the melee, was just to CC shit <laughs> while they killed it. And that's not fun. <laughs> that's really not fun. Um, the same with the stone, uh, the, the stone, I forget the name of the dogs, dog boss at the beginning. Same again. Uh, and then we kind of had the soulbinder boss and things like that. It was a bit gimmicky. Um, again, I don't hate it, but it wasn't a great, great raid in my opinion. Next is going to be Castle Nathria. Castle Nathria, uh, although it's the most recent raid, is so hit and miss for me in terms of what I enjoy. And as, as it stands right now, I my guild stopped raiding, and you guys know I haven't immediately gone back to trying to find a raid guild. It's because I just don't want to be playing Castle Nathria. I have no in, no desire, and I'm not missing it either. When people are talking to me, like my old friends from the old guild, like how they're doing, the, the most positive comments i get back is that they're clearing in an hour and a half or uh they're clearing in a couple of hours anybody who's having to spend more than a couple of hours in castle nathria is pissed off because the bosses just aren't that fun stone legion generals is probably the biggest thing there. i have obviously a sour taste in my mouth about that but my favorite boss in there honestly was like sludge fist which i know the melee are gonna hate me for other than that inerva's okay it's a lot of okay and there's some really tedious bosses like council of blood is awful um, Stolage of Generals is awful. Artificer Zymox, I can't stand that boss. Uh, Hungering Destroyer is just really boring. It's really long. Not a big fan of Castle Nathria at all. Uh, let's move on then. Right, this, the next two also need the context explained to them. So the next one, I think is slightly better than Castle Nathria, but I don't rate it particularly highly, is the Bastion of Twilight. Now, the Bastion of Twilight should be higher on the list because eventually it's good. And that's how it was difficult to put this list together. Eventually, the Bastion of Twilight was really good. Uh, the Ascendant Council is so good. Cho'Gal is really good. Uh, and Sinestra is awesome. But we can't just forget that this entire raid was bugged for months and broken. Uh, which really dragged it. I have to de demote it down here. If it launched in its final state, I think it would be really high up on the list. But it didn't. Um, particularly with the 10 man. This is where I had to kill my own guild here. So again, the context here is the Bastion of Twilight and the next raid, which will be Blackwing Descent. Uh, they, uh, I gotta mix these two together. So Bastion of Twilight and Blackwing Descent are my next two picks. And it was because those fights were broken. Like Blackwing Descent had Atromedes, which was flat out completely broken and unkillable for m like months, where guilds were dragging it out onto the central platform out of its boss room to cheese it. And Blizzard was okay with it because they just had a completely, utterly broken boss. In Ten Man, uh, in the Ten Man version, they had just left certain HP values of enemies and the amount of damage they did at the 25 man levels. So Ten Man's just couldn't do it. And they just left it like that. So it's such a miserable experience, which is a shame because Nefarian, Great Fight, Chimeron, Maloriac, those are all really, really good fights. They just required ultimate amounts of class stacking. They killed my guild. Moving to 25 man was just obscene. Yeah, real shame. Because I think both of them, if they'd launched properly, would be way higher on my list. Uh, next up would be the Dragon Soul. The Dragon Soul is sort of remembered because of its ultimately disappointing ending. Which is why it is down on my list. Madness of Deathwing and Spine of Deathwing are both awful, awful fights. The entire expansion building up to eventually fighting Deathwing's claws... Dude, <laughs> so not fun. Uh, the Spine of Deathwing should have been fun, but isn't. Uh, unfortunately, the idea is really good. I often use that as the example of a fight that sounds awesome on paper, but then in reality, it's just awful. But it has some really good fights in there. The Stolebinder is really good. I love Ultraxian. I thought that was pretty cool. Playing tennis was really good. There were some good fights in there. There were really good fights. I like the idea that the first boss is the first boss is hard mode was literally just creating two of him and just like, well, there's two now. That was a really old school call to classic RPGs is to have bosses that just go, wait a minute, but there's more. Uh, and it just swaps that out, which was really cool as well. 
But overall, the Dragon Soul is a bit disappointing. Only slightly better than the Dragon Soul, then, is Nihilotha, the Waking City. Nihilotha, the Waking City. So, Nihilotha is low down on my list. It's not as low as some others, and some of you might have expected it to be lower down. But it's not. Like, overall, Nihilotha's okay. Uh, I had a lot of fun with some of these bosses, and I had a lot of good... A lot of good memories in here. Even with, like, the more annoying bosses. Like, the only bosses I really disliked were Ilganoth and Drestagath. The rest of them, I thought, were really good uh, for the most part. Like, Nazoth is obviously disappointing, but it's still an engaging fun fight. To watch as a caster, it was awful. But playing it, I was pretty engaged. It's disappointing. It, it, we hoped for a lot more from Nazoth, certainly on the Mythic version. Uh, but Fury of Nazoth, it's it's a good fight. Having all those tentacles come out is really good. Raden is spectacularly designed. Really good fight. Um, even Hive Mind is really fun. I enjoyed Hive Mind. You got this fight where you could just blast and go crazy. Um, it's a shame the earlier bosses were so easy. But it wasn't broken, broken. So it moves up over the other bosses. I had more fun in Nihilotha than I did in Dragon Soul. Let's put it that way. Next up is kind of an odd one, but it's uh, Terrace of the Endless Springs. I thought this was the best version Blizzard ever did of a healer-centric fight. I thought they really did that with Sulong. I thought they did a good job with that. I really like the middle boss. I forget his name right now. Uh, but I thought they did a great job with that as well. And the final boss was turned out to be an absolute monster. It's a, sh it's a shame I didn't get to prog-prog that fight. Um... But what a, a good way of taking what was this sort of like little mini raid and then blowing it up into something so much bigger and so much better than it was. Um, Terrace of the Spring for a three boss raid was bang on. Uh, really good job there. Oh, four bosses. And we had the choice boss as well. We had the multiple choice boss where you had the, an optional hard mode thrown in. Uh, so Terrace of the Spring, not bad actually, not bad. It's a small raid, so you know, it doesn't get the, the epicness of some of the others, but it's okay. Um... Next up, I'm going to put Eternal Palace. Eternal Palace starts so well with Abyssal Commander Shavara. Like, Abyssal Commander Shavara, again on Mythic, is a really good opening boss. It's hard, it's tough. It reminded me of, like, original Blackwing Lair when we didn't really know how to play the game and we had this big wall in front of us where you had to kind of get good. Uh, Abyssal Commander was like that. Then it really lets itself down, like, almost immediately. We have Water Boss, which is one of the most disappointing bosses in history. We have Blackwater Behemoth. But then it picks itself back up again. Orgazoa and Ashvane, really, really good bosses. Uh, re and that was great. And then, of course, it lets itself down again, which is why it, Eternal Palace is like, it's good. Then it's kind of, oh, my God, it's good. Uh, and then we get Zakul and, of course, um, Queen Ashara. And I am not a fan of those bosses. Zakul is rated, once again, as one of my top five worst bosses in World of Warcraft. Um, such a shame. Uh, but it is the truth. <laughs> it is the absolute truth. It's it's awful. I hated that boss every single week. Uh, but whatever. It's, you know, it's okay. Uh, next up is... And this was tough. This is where it started to get really hard. Because most of these are probably relatively interchangeable. Uh, there's good and bad points in all of these. In fact, there has been for the last sort of three. Like Nihilotha, Terrace on the Springs, and Eternal Palace. There's good and bad points to all of them. Uh, but next up, I kind of pushed ahead of the Eternal Palace was Uldia. Um, Uldir is so cool. So, so cool. Talok's elevator and how that boss works was always fun. Every week, I look forward to doing that. I look forward to doing Mother every single week. I look forward to doing Vezax. I look forward to doing, I forget all the names, but, um, the boss that had the orbs that fell down. I loved the, the one where we had to spread in a circle, uh, with the blood debuff. Didn't enjoy Fetid. So again, these good and bad points. So then you get Fetid and you get Zul. Uh, and Mithrax, which are kind of like, eh, they're not all in the same category. Like, Fetid is just rough. Uh, but Zul was okay. Actually, once we got the hang of Zul and we could manage Zul, it was actually fine. Mithrax is annoying because you had cheesy stuff like standing on plants and stuff. Well, not, not a great experience for anybody. Uh, but then Gahoon was, I actually thought Gahoon Mythic was all right. It's a shame that it ended up being a kind of slog just to get to the last phase and the last phase was all that mattered after you'd figured out how to do the other phases uh and it basically nothing you did in the rest of the phases really mattered other than surviving but that uh the culmination of gahoon that last phase of gahoon is really intense like for the first kill was heart pounding uh which is what i looked for in a good raid and i, I enjoyed gahoon uh, despite my my friends i think being more disappointed it's like well you know, the first 60 or 70% of this fight kind of doesn't matter. It did. There was a lot to manage there. 
Uh, but it was... I think The Last Phase of Cahoon really brought it back up. So all day raises above the Eternal Palace for that, because uh, Queen of Shara sucks. Uh, next up, I have High Mall. I have really good memories of High Mall, despite the fact the first boss being garbage in the arena. But after that, this fight, this this raid was pretty good. Um, I don't have too many terrible memories of High Mall. Thinking back through it and watching the videos of my first kills in here, the Butcher was really good. Uh, the Butcher Mythic was intense from start to finish. Like, what an absolute again heart pounding race i loved the gimmick on the beach with bracken spore of the flamethrower stuff and managing that it got a little tedious but i liked the idea they went for there i think that was a gimmick that kind of worked for the most part uh i loved the rise mountains texas that was really cool the twin ogron were very cool as well there was lots of manage there you were constantly into shifting around just overlap boss but you know okay um and then, of course, we had the ultimate end boss with Cho'Gal coming out, which I missed the first pulls of that with my guild and the first kill. Uh, but it was a long fight that had a, some sort of payoff. It's not quite the same as some of other raids we'll see later on that had a, a sort of extra hidden phase. But I think in terms of how that fight paid off, I think it was pretty good. Um, all right, next up, and this really started to get tricky now, guys. Uh, Throne of the Four Winds, which I imagine a lot of people don't even really remember existed, but it was the Alakia raid. Uh, but also, sadly forgotten, is Conclave of the Four Winds. Uh, the Conclave was actually a great fight, and we managed to do it on 10-man, which was, at the time, because of the... Like, similar to Bastion of Twilight and Black Blackwing Descent, they were balanced improperly. Um, overcoming that was such a momentous feeling. Uh, and uh, the team I had at the time was absolutely glorious. Really glorious. Some of the best raiders I'd ever played with in a 10-man environment. Uh, and then moved on to 25 man for Alakir. So I kind of got a really good deal with Throne of the Four Winds and remember it very fondly. I think the Alakir fight, after it was fixed, obviously a lot of people remember Paragon um, doing the awful stuff there. Chris, if we get a clip of Paragon leaving half their raid outside, outside of the fight and then throwing them in later. Once that was fixed, which is when I got to it, so I didn't have to deal with that stuff. Alakir is a great, great fight with a wonderful culmination, which it actually is swimming ironically it's swimming it's just that it's in air so people don't consider it swimming but it is the swimming mechanics like we would see in things like blackwater behemoth but done properly and done really fun watching the storms and the lightning move around having the whole raid fighting in the air against alakir i think it's absolutely spectacular uh and although it's only a two boss raid i think they nailed both the bosses there i thought they were quite cool all right next up <sighs> The Emerald Nightmare. I imagine some of you thought this would be way down my list. And have maybe been like, where the hell is Emerald Nightmare? Emerald Nightmare is remembered so badly just because of Xavius. The rest of the raid is really good. And I have no problems with the Emerald Nightmare outside of Xavius being disappointed. But, I mean, that was... If Scenarius was the last fight in there, it would be remembered so much more fondly. Because Scenarius was a genuinely very hard fight. Um, but we had... Um, Ursark, which was great. The opening dragon was really good. The Dragons of Nightmare was the, probably the weaker fight, but I still thought it was pretty fun. Uh, depending on, what, especially on, depending on what class you were playing, you could do some really spectacular things with the Dragons of Nightmare. Uh, and we also had the large spider, which was also a cool fight, having the wings and flying around in the place. It's a shame, and, and I, I genuinely believe this. I think it's a real shame that Emerald Nightmare is remembered so poorly, and people mock it just because of Xavius. Because the rest of the raid was really good. Um, what a pity. Now the next one I know some of you are going to be pissed by. Because I saw a lot of people rate this as their best raid ever. Uh, I do not. And it's Antorus the Burning Throne. Antorus is visually very cool. I loved uh, like the visual style of Antorus. I think Garothi Worldbreaker as the opener was really strong. To have this giant Cro-Mog uh, Cro type fight uh, going on. Uh, but... I didn't, it's not a hard fight, it's not an interesting fight, <laughs> that's the problem, like, that, as a raider, that's the bit that interests me, is like, okay, it looks cool, what does it actually do, um, and it didn't do much, and then we had the dogs, <sighs> and we had the council pods, I think, like, the, the standout bosses for me, the things that really made me happy in there, would be, um, the bridge boss, I absolutely adored every single week, watching our demon hunter, shout outs to JJ, uh, turbo speeding through that bridge and dying at the end. Like, it always made me laugh every single time. Um, was such a great fight as a mage as it was then because it lined up perfectly with every single mage cooldown so you could really blast them open, like, let loose and open the floodgates on that fight. 
uh, which was super fun. Kingaroth was a really fun fight as well. Uh, dealing with those extra robots moving around, having to judge the spin arounds wasn't too difficult, but it worked really well. Um, but then it's got some downfall points. Like, the rest of the bosses are fine, but it's then got these downfall points for me. Like, Agrimar in particular was... I hated Agrimar. I did play Blood DK on both... On, on, in two guilds for Agrimar. Um, and that was purely to manage ads, which is my job. And then remember talking to the melee at the time, and the melee were like, Agrimar took a lot of wipes, but they basically had no job. It, Agrimar was basically a training dummy for them. They were so bored uh, dealing with Agrimar. I do not like the Argus Mythic fight um, at all. Like I did, I didn't like Argus. I not, a lot of people rate Argus really highly. I did not enjoy that fight whatsoever. I actually thought it was really just kind of tedious managing those debuffs. All I mean, realistically, all you're doing that last fight is moving a circle and kill orbs and keep DPSing the boss. I I, I thought mechanically it just wasn't that fun getting hit by you know just watching out for size spinning it looked awesome which is the thing like visually it looked spectacular i'll never forget seeing those scythes right at, rise out the floor i'd be like oh my god uh but actually playing it nah <laughs> not for me next up is the real mixed bag then it's siege of Ogrimmar. one of the things that counts against this for me honestly is it was just too fucking long uh going through siege of Ogrimmar is really tedious i also Kind of didn't want to put this on the list too much because I didn't get to prog the end of it, like Garrosh uh, and Siege Crafter. I didn't really get that. I had bits and pieces of Siege of because it went on for so long that I had, uh, I think I had one of my children during Siege of Um But it, it's a real hit and miss. Dark Shamans, Galacras, you know, you got Spoils of Pandaria. It's got some real stinkers in there. Now, it puts it way above because it's also got Siege Crafter. It's got Garrosh. It's got the Paragons of the Klaxi. It's got Thok. It's got these absolutely amazing bosses in there. But then it's got, like, General Nazgrim, which is like, Jesus Christ, this is fucking so boring. Uh, it's got, like, it's got some real stinkers mixed in there. And it's it feels like you're doing two raids that um, had a whole bunch of ideas thrown into it. It feels really like a hat, and they just threw a load of ideas in and then made one giant raid out of it. I don't think it quite paid off, at least for me. And that's all I can say. At least for me, Siege of Ogrimmar did not quite pay off. Uh, which is a bit sad, because a lot of people remember this fondly. Even going back uh, to pick, to like tease people about getting Tuss of Manoroth and stuff like that as Transmog. I'm so bored going through Siege of Ogrimmar. Uh, it just takes so goddamn long to get through that place. But it has got some greats, and it's a real mixed bag. Uh, so it's not higher on the list because of that. I did prefer it to Antorus, though. All right. <sighs> Original Naxxramas. Right, okay. Original Naxxramas. So I have a sordid history here, as most people do who have stepped foot into the original Naxxramas. Naxxramas, the original one, and this is weird because I imagine a lot of you, uh, or a lot of people playing Classic, uh, have now done Naxxramas, which is not what happened in the original time. In fact, very few people got to do Naxxramas. I was so excited. So again, the context is important. I was so excited to get into Next Ramus. I was such a nerd at this point, like a mega nerd, that I was actively following everything I could find about Next Ramus. I joined in in the mathematics of how patchwork worked, hearing about how the Four Horsemen worked. I was up at like 4 a.m. waiting for the release of what Saffron, Saffron looked like because we've been promised something pretty amazing. Um, then you get in there. Most of them bosses are absolute trash. Like, absolute trash. And I remember finally, when I first went into Naxxramas, I think we did Anubra Khan first. Um, and I just remember thinking, so this is the classic version, not the Wrath of the Lich King version. I will point out here, the Wrath of the Lich King version is like dead last on the list. I don't know what the hell that was supposed to be. Uh, it was just a, a cash-in as far as I can tell. Uh, but most of the bosses were shit, in my opinion. Like, most of them were shit. Um... There are some standout bosses in there that I thought could be quite cool, but killing Grobulus and things like that, I was just, this is not, this is really disappointing. Really disappointing. Like, the hardest thing about Naxxramas and in, in the original vanilla just seems to be whether or not you could get enough geared people in there uh, to actually meet the DPS challenges and things like that. Because remember, the DPS challenges back then weren't stacking extra 80 potions and things like that. You had to hope people were... Wearing drops, which was hard. Alright, this might surprise some of you, but this was a raid. 
My next one is Upper Black Rock Spire. Um, this was really my first introduction to raiding, and what an experience it was. And this is why I have Molten Core so far down the list, because Upper Black Rock Spire is the first raid uh, from uh, that they had. Uh, you could do it 15 man originally. Um, it's either 15 or 10. But it was so fun. I believe it was 15 for UBRS. Um, you think about the bosses that are in UBRS, and they're really good. Um, the dog, the black hand, flying in on the dragon and doing all that kind of stuff. Put yourself in the context not of the people who are playing Classic right now, who blast them into smithereens, and, you know, I've seen them a million times. Put it in the context of you've never played World of Warcraft before, and never been in a group before, and then you're fighting these huge bosses, and there's dragons coming from everywhere. You're unleashing a fire elemental by pressing the totems uh, to make it work. Uh, and then having that big finale room with the general staring at you and trying to deal with it. Uh, having that dog chomp people and people running around and doing all these crazy things. It was farmable, it wasn't hard, but it was a wonderful experience. And this is why I'm so disappointed in Molten Core, because UBRS had much more going on. And it's, it's up on the list because of the context of this is my first experience with this. Walking into the room, seeing the big old dog oh boy, uh, people obviously moaning about Finkel Skinner, uh, having Blackhand come in on that dragon for the first time and being like, oh shit, uh, and then him landing and being like, I'm going to kill you and stuff, and then actually killing us, because I think my first time there, we wiped like three times on Blackhand, it was really tough, jumping down into the pit knowing you're going into the pit of death. Uh, all those moments really stand out for me as a really stellar raid. Um... Next above that, I've put Crucible of Storms. Uh, Crucible of Storms. Crucible of Storms is not going to be remembered highly in history. And it's a shame, because Unat, in particular, is the most difficult boss they've ever made in World of Warcraft. It deserves way more pomp and circumstance than it's got. Crucible of Storms is going to be remembered badly for a number of reasons. One, the loot was pretty fucking garbage, so nobody wanted to go there. Two, not many, not enough guilds have killed Jaina on Mythic to go to Crucible. And three, it was designed for guilds that were farming Jaina already, which means it was designed around the one of the one of the one of the one of the one percent. It was designed for very few guilds. So barely anybody got to do it. And also, the, the reason it's so high up on my list is they tuned it almost perfectly. Uh, and it's one of the most satisfying raids to complete I ever did. Uh, I, I really liked us killing the Crucible of Storms. Like, it was over it was a really overwhelming experience to overcome that challenge as a team and to be i feel fortunate i genuinely feel fortunate that i was in a position where i got to be a part of that experience because i don't think we're going to see a crucible of the storm style raid that is designed for the absolute top 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 raiders in its mythic version again but it fell at such a weird time where people were farming battle for dazzle law um and they had no need of Crucible. It's just a shame it had no temptation for people to even bother with that. So following on from that, Battle for Dazzler Law. Battle for Dazzler Law is fine. I, I enjoyed the Battle for Dazzler Law. Uh, it's it's a it's a mostly really fun raid. Um, it's a shame the first boss is such trash, but you had the giant monkey donkey konging around a city. Really fun. This this brought back a lot of memories of Classic Blizzard. Where they were like, oh, let's have some fun. I really liked the uh, the twin shamans that you had to fight there. The, even the little mini game, as dumb as it was. And as often as I no doubt fucked it up. But then you had Opulence. Buan Samdi was a really cool little fight that we had going on there. Uh, we had Ant-Man boss in there. They came up with so many different ideas. Uh, Jane and Mythic. I didn't get to prog that because I was casting at the time. But when, when, when I did finally get to prog it properly, I enjoyed that. I didn't go through the horrors some people did there. Um, even the boat boss, as silly as it was, was kind of fun. Like, there's there's very few down points in Battle for Dazzler Lore after the first boss. And the first boss is, like, free loot. So you go in and you blast it. Even though that boss is garbage, you do get to sort of just get warmed up. You get to get fired up, and you get to just go ham on that first boss and just blow it to pieces. And after that, there's a lot of really fun bosses for a long time. Like, each boss is, like, something I was like, ooh, this is cool. Uh, this should be a lot of fun. Uh, so, like Battle of Dazzler Law. Okay. We're now getting into the nitty gritty, and I've no doubt some of you are like, where is this? Uh, I know one in particular, you guys are like, why have you not mentioned that? Is he not putting it on the list? Uh, here we go. Next up, above, above Battle for Dazzler Law, I put Trial of the Val Trial of Valor. Now, I know JB's going to be angry about me for this one, but Trial of Valor... 
I need the context for it. So Odin is a great fight. Uh, this was where they really massively stepped up the difficulty. Like, people were really surprised to have been farming the previous raid on a high difficulty and then wiping to, like, Odin, like, hardcore. Odin was really tough. Um, but lots going on, lots to manage, lots of interesting things happening with um, with Odin that got us all invested as a guild. Again, if a fight can pull me in and not make me sort of, like, have these periods of, like, oh, we're just DPSing now, I'm always into it. Always something to watch with Odin. Guam, I rate Guam very, very highly. It's not overly complex, but it's another patchwork style boss that they tuned so tightly that it mattered. Every player had to push, push, push from the get-go. Uh, and there was a lot of opportunity. I think this is why I really like Guam, is they did have the Guam running around phase where it was up to you to try and think, how do I squeeze out that extra like 4 DPS while this guy is tear assing around the place? And lots of conversation going on amongst the guildies about... If we stand here, if, if I can maneuver here, and if I can do this, I can do a bit more melee. Maybe if I swap this talent in, I can do a little touch more, and it's going to pay off for us long term. Lots of conversations like that, getting it down to that last little percentages. The actual boss I dislike the most in here is Hellier. Um, we did do Hellier when it was current content, actually the day before the Nighthold launched, I believe. Um, the only reason I dislike Hellier is I do not like dance fights. I do not like fights where the raid has to act as one person, essentially. And you move in very specific steps together. Because it feels like, if any of you have ever seen the Impossible game, where it's just a block that's bouncing, it has to bounce exactly right. It feels like you're just playing the Impossible game for a really long time, hoping everybody gets their round correctly. And that was what Hellier was for me. But I'm not going to deny Hellier is a, an absolute spectacle of a fight to behold. Uh, having the sea washing everything away, having these... Uh, undead mariners come out to sea like the mist having Helia herself be so huge the amount of damage you had to pump there the movement uh dealing with interrupts getting back in finding uh, targets wherever they appeared all that stuff was really fun so i do like Helia, but i don't like the style of fight that makes sense uh let's move on to hellfire citadel is just above this so hellfire citadel is what some of you would consider not it's, it's not in my top 10 um but I enjoyed this. Uh, I was actually talking to the person I was tanking with at the time. I was a tank during Hellfire Citadel uh, about Hellfire Assault. I enjoyed Hellfire Assault. It's a it, it, mythic, anyway. I thought it was kind of fun. There was a lot to manage there. I did some tank guides and stuff for that. Uh, I also liked the big robot charging around. We, I remember laughing all the way through that. But like some of the other raids, it has some up and down points for a big end, end of expansion raid. Um, it has some up and down points like Chromog... Um, you know shooting the colors out the floor and all that kind of stuff not not particularly great <coughs> now i'm lucky here it would probably be lower on my list i did not have to progress Gorfiend mythic um <laughs> uh, that was just the way the cookie fell for me at the time in terms of irl i did not have to do that um so i'm very fortunate i missed what is wildly considered throughout the player base as the absolute worst of the worst of the worst but going on manoroth Archimon, Tyrant Valhari. I know some people dislike Iskar. I thought Iskar was fun. Uh, throwing the orb around was fine. I We didn't need the add-on or anything. They were on your raid frames. I never got the idea that you needed the add-on, but uh, all those fights I thought were really fun. Uh, also, we can't deny the, um, the introduction of the legendary rings there and starting to blow things up. Uh, so, as time went on, this raid got more and more fun until you could start doing some really silly things, which, in the overall picture of it, was really good. Um... So Hellfire Citadel rates up there very, very highly for me. But not as highly as the Firelands. I love the Firelands so much. Uh, every one of these raids we're talking about now is something that I, I think is really special. I love the Firelands. I, I, the only reason it's lower on the list than some others is the everything before Ragnaros was really quite easy for a guild of the quality i was in and it was a real shame because it felt like we we cleared a lot of the bosses very very quickly and then we're just stuck on ragnaros so you've off, probably often heard the phrase the one boss raid uh like battle for dazzle law is often considered a one boss raid because you you had three times as many wipes on Jaina as you did on the rest of the raid and Firelands was like five times as many wipes on ragnaros as you did on any other boss but it still had, those bosses were really good I'm probably going to get the name wrong, uh, but I pronounce it Alisrazor. 
uh, I thought that fight was super cool. Just watching the mages fly around in the sky, shooting their pyros. I had so much to do there. I was a death knight during this period of time. I really liked Lord Ryleth. I loved the idea of steering the boss in directions and like, left, 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 right, 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 and having to swap around and do all that kind of stuff with the rogues bitching because they wanted to blade flurry. Um, I, I, I thought Shannox was a great opening fight. Beth Tillak, I, I was lucky as a DK. I got to manage the ads. I got a whole cave to myself uh, to deal with Beth Tillak. Uh, I had a lot of fun there. And then, we, of course, we had Balrog. Uh, which was the ultimate DPS fight, and that was where I started like getting rank one DPS in the world ranks, which was super fun. Um, it was a shame Major Dome on Staghelm was not hard at all and really boring. I think we one shot it, and then we had, of course, Ragnaros Heroic. Like, what a tremendous fight! Raggy's got legs. <laughs> Raggy's got legs. Who knew, man? Raggy's got legs. Uh, super fun. Really hold the fire, uh, firelands in high regard. It's just a shame. The only reason it's lower on the list is uh, those bosses were pretty easy. Uh, for a competent guild, uh, it was all about just Raggy. And I can't really give an overall raid high five just because of one boss. Which is why Zulaman is above there. So this is not the dungeon version. Uh, this is the original raid version uh, of Zulaman. Uh, Zulaman is ridiculously creative. I remember specifically when Zulaman released and we went in for a giggle in some off time. I think it was 10 man originally. Because um, they promised us the battle bear. They promised us the battle bear. Uh, so we went in to do that one shot, right? We were max geared. It should be fine. That raid was really hard. Um, it was There was a lot to learn in there, which surprised the hell out of us. Uh, and really, it took us by surprise. Because up until that point, every time a little mini raid had come out, uh, it had always been the case of it was to gear people for the current raid. It was like an extra source of gear uh, that was slightly lower than what you would probably already wear. But it was to help out and give people extra gearing sources that couldn't form a full raid. So we expected to walk in and stomp it into the ground, obviously, and get a mount, which is kind of what happens these days. Zulman was not that. Zulman required a lot of work, and we wiped hardcore, I think, on the second to last boss, the Shadow Guy. Uh, he melted us, and then the last boss really pays off. But each of the bosses in there was really fun. Utterly gobsmacked by Zulaman. Uh, totally took me by surprise how cool this was. And then on top of that, we then had the bear run. So Zulaman is a fantastic raid on its own. Uh, or was. It's a dungeon now. But it was a fantastic raid on its own two feet. It was really good. All the bosses were difficult. But then you added the timer on to get the battle bear and how much that added to it uh, until you did it. Uh, was so much more fun and gave it an extra element that was really really cool and if you compare it to say Culling of Strathholm as a five man dungeon which had a similar sort of premise it's not even close as to how cool Zulaman was min, min maxing can we pull that extra trash the beginnings of things like the MDI and Mythic Plus right this is generally what Zulaman was this is like the playground for Blizzard starting to test these ideas all the way back then and I thought it paid off wonderfully, especially when I eventually got my bear, uh, which was a great feeling. I'm going to leave it there for this part because this video is going to be really, really long. But don't worry, we'll be back soon. Bye, guys.